Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 40 of the course on time series modeling and forecasting. This is the last lecture of this course. In the previous lecture, we discussed how a sharp change whether it is uh, increase or decrease is usually followed by several other sharp changes in the time series. So, after the sharp change, you usually get a lot of variability or a volatile behavior of the time series. Uh, for many economic time series or for many financial time series, analyzing such kind of volatile behavior is very important. And the models which can be used for modeling such kind of volatile behavior of the variance are arc and garc models. So, now in the previous lecture, I considered arc models and this lecture, uh, I will discuss uh, some more properties of the arc model and forecasting procedures for the arc model and then I will discuss garc models. Now, we consider the order determination of arc model. So, first we check the significance of arc effect and if it is found to be significant, then one can use the PACF of u hat t square to determine the arc order. We just plot the PACF of u hat t square and uh, you know that uh, this arc model is just like the autoregressive model. So, using the PACF or you can also plot ACF, you can observe the behavior of PACF and ACF, then it helps you in determining the order of the process. Uh, for the sigma square t is equal to expectation of u t square given f t minus 1, which is equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 u t minus 1 square plus 1 plus alpha m u t minus m square. So, for the given sample or for the given information up to time t minus 1, u t square can be written as alpha naught plus alpha 1 u t minus 1 square plus 1 plus alpha m u t minus m square plus eta t, where eta t is uncorrelated series with mean 0. So, you can say that this u t square follows a r m process and the order of this process is m and uh, you want to determine the order of this process. And if you plot the PACF of estimated residuals, if the order is m, then PACF will vanish after m lakhs. So, this is how PACF helps you in determining the order of the arc processes. Further, under the normality assumption, the likelihood function, function of an arc m model is f u m plus 1, u m plus 2, so on u n given alpha, where alpha is the vector of all the coefficients alpha naught, alpha 1, so on alpha m, and then this likelihood function is equal to f u m plus 1 given f n minus 1, so on f u n minus 1 given f n minus 1, 
and then you have f u n given f n minus 1 and then last at the last you have f u 1 u 2 u m given alpha and then you can write it as product t equal to m plus 1 to n since we have assumed the normal distribution. So, we get here 1 upon under root 2 pi sigma square t exponential minus u t square upon 2 sigma square. So, you get all these terms in the product. Then at last you have f u 1 u 2 u m given alpha. Then f u 1 u 2 u m given alpha is the joint density function of u 1 u 2 u m. And this the form of f u 1 u 2 u m given alpha is usually complicated. So, for large samples we ignore the last term and then we use the conditional likelihood function which is given by f u m plus 1. So, on u n given alpha u 1 u 2 u m equal to product t equal to m plus 1 to n 1 upon under root 2 pi sigma square t e to power minus u t square upon 2 sigma square t. Then sigma square t can be estimated recursively or it can be calculated recursively. Then we estimate the parameters of the model by maximizing log likelihood function. So, we take log of the likelihood function which is equal to summation over t equal to m plus 1 to n minus half you get log sigma square t minus u t square upon 2 sigma square. Where sigma square t is actually equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 u t minus 1 square so on plus alpha m u t minus m square and this is calculated recursively. And uh, sometimes we assume that uh, the time series follows student t distribution. So, suppose x is a random variable which follows student t distribution then variance of x is nu upon nu minus 2 and then the pdf of say epsilon equal to x upon under root nu upon nu minus 2 is given by f epsilon t given nu equal to gamma nu plus 1 by 2 upon gamma nu by 2 under root nu minus 2 pi and then you have 1 plus epsilon t square upon nu minus 2 whole to the power minus nu plus 1 by 2, nu is greater than 2. So, this is the PDF of student t distribution. And if we assume that the errors follow student t distribution, uh, remember that in arc model the disturbances have fatter tails than the normal distribution and uh, this t distribution for has fatter tails than the normal distribution. So, often one prefers to use t distribution over the normal distribution as the distribution of errors. So, if you are using the t distribution then we are have u t equal to sigma t epsilon t and the conditional likelihood function of u t is obtained as again we write f u m plus 1 so on u n given alpha u 1 so on u m equal to. Now, we take the probability density function of student t distribution here. So, we get this product of PDF of student t distribution. Now, if in the degrees of freedom nu is known, then we maximize this log likelihood function, which is equal to summation t equal to m plus 1 to n 
then half log sigma square t plus nu plus 1 by 2 log 1 plus u t square upon nu minus 2 sigma square t. We are just ignoring the constant terms in this log likelihood. Now, we consider case 2 when nu is not known. So, now nu is also your parameter and you have to estimate it. Then we maximize this log like root function L 1. Uh, remember in the earlier case in case 1, we have treated the terms involving nu as constant. But now those terms are no more constant because nu is also unknown parameter and you have to estimate it. So, now we include those terms also in the likelihood function and your likelihood function is now n minus m log gamma nu plus 1 by 2 minus gamma nu log gamma nu by 2 minus half log nu minus 2 pi plus you have this log likelihood which you have used in the previous case, case 1. And then for estimating all these parameters including nu, you have to maximize this log likelihood function and then you can obtain the maximum likelihood estimators. Sometimes uh, one also uses skewed student t distributions for estimation of parameters of the model. So, if we assume that the errors are not only having fatter tails than the normal distribution, but errors are skewed also, whether positively skewed or negatively skewed, then one can go for a skewed student distribution and then define the likelihood function and maximize the likelihood function and then one can obtain the maximum likelihood estimators. Now, we consider forecasting in arc models. Actually, forecasting in arc models is the same as auto regressive models, because uh, these arc models are just parallel to auto regressive models. The arc models are for u t square and the auto regressive models are for y t, but in both in arc models we write u t square as the function of past values of u t square as a linear function of past values of u t square. In auto regressive models we write y t as a linear function of past values of y t. So, we use the same method for predict forecasting the arc models which we had used for auto regressive models. So, at forecast origin h the one step at forecast of sigma square h plus 1 is sigma square h 1 equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 u h square plus 1 plus alpha m u h plus 1 minus m square. Remember you can write the arc process in this form, which is just like the auto regressive process. And then to obtain the forecasted value, suppose you have to obtain sigma square h 2, then you have to take expectation of u h plus 2 square given the information up to h. Sorry. Here we have sigma square h 2. Then sigma square h plus 2 is equal to
this. Now, expectation of alpha naught is alpha naught and actually this expectation is for given f h. So, then expectation of u h plus 1 is square given f h is sigma square h 1. Then you have given f h you get alpha 2 u h square plus 1 plus alpha m u h plus 2 minus m square. So, this is how you get sigma square h 2. In general for obtaining L step ahead forecast, we have sigma square h l equal to alpha naught plus summation i equal to 1 to m alpha i sigma square h l minus i where sigma square h l minus i is equal to u h l minus i square if l minus i is less than or equal to 0. So, this you can easily verify. Now, we consider the generalized auto regressive conditional heteroscedastic or GARC models. So, GARC model generalizes ARC model by adding terms involving lagged values of sigma square t. So, it belongs to ARMA world, it is just like the ARMA process. So, the GARC MS model is specified as say so, u t is equal to sigma t epsilon t, then sigma square t is equal to alpha naught plus summation i equal to 1 to m alpha i u t minus i square plus summation j equal to 1 to s beta j sigma t minus j square. So, remember in arc model we have just these terms, the terms involving lagged values of u t minus i square, but in GARC model we also have the terms involving lagged values of sigma square t. So, it is just like it is parallel to ARMA models. So, in ARMA models you have both the terms auto regressive terms as well as moving average terms here also. Then epsilon t is a sequence of i i d random variables with mean 0 and variance 1 and we assume that epsilon t follows standard normal distribution or sometimes we assume that it follows a standardized st student t distribution or generalized error distribution. You can also take a skewed student t distribution also as the distribution of epsilon t. Now, we consider properties of GARC model. So, you write u t square equal to sigma square t plus eta t or sigma square t is equal to u t square minus eta t. Then we put sigma square t minus i equal to u t minus i square minus eta t minus i for all i equal to 0, 1, so on s in the process. So, you get u t square equal to alpha naught plus summation i equal to 1 to you take maximum of m s alpha i plus beta i u t minus i square plus eta t minus summation j equal to 1 to s beta j eta t minus j. Where alpha i and beta j are 0 for i greater than m and j greater than s. So, in fact, here we have substituted 
sigma square t is equal to u t square minus eta t. So, then you take eta t towards this side and then we have substituted uh, u i equal to u t minus i square minus eta t minus i for all i equal to 0, 1, so on s in the process. So, you get u t square equal to alpha naught plus summation i equal to 1 to you take maximum of m s alpha i plus beta i u t minus i square plus eta t minus summation j equal to 1 to s beta j eta t minus j. Where alpha i and beta j are 0 for i greater than m and j greater than s. So, in fact, here we have substituted sigma square t is equal to u t square minus eta t. So, then you take eta t towards this side and then we have substituted Uh, u so, so, sigma t minus i square equal to u t minus i square minus eta t minus i here. Yeah. So, you get terms having u t minus i square and then you add those terms here. So, you get alpha i plus beta i and then we take summation from i equal to 1 to maximum of m and s. u t minus i square. And then we take alpha i equal to 0 if i is greater than m or beta j equal to 0 if j is greater than s. Now, this eta t is a martingale difference sequence or martingale difference series with mean 0 and covariances. Covariance between eta t, eta t minus j is equal to 0 for all j greater than or equal to 0 and we define a martingale difference series as eta t is a martingale difference series if expectation of eta t given f t minus 1 is equal to 0 simple. So, if you take expectation of eta t given the information up to time t minus 1 then you get 0. Now, we assume that the unconditional variance is finite, then we have expectation of u t square equal to you take expectation of both the sides. So, expectation of u t square is equal to sigma square u or variance of u equal to alpha naught plus summation i equal to maximum of m s alpha i plus beta i then expectation of u t minus i square. Now, you are taking unconditional expectation. So, this will give you the variance of u t. So, you get variance of u t equal to alpha naught plus this summation alpha i plus beta i and then you can take variance of u t outside expectation of 
eta t is equal to 0, expectation of eta t minus j is equal to 0. This conditional expectation is 0. So, if you take unconditional expectation of eta t, that is also 0. So, from there you obtain expectation of u t square, which is by the means of u t equal to alpha naught upon 1 minus summation over i alpha i summation over j minus summation over j beta j or you can also write it as alpha naught upon 1 minus summation i equal to 1 to maximum of m s alpha i plus beta i. Then since variance is always greater than or equal to 0, you require the condition that alpha naught alpha i beta i are non-negative and summation i equal to 1 to maximum m s alpha i plus beta i is less than 1. And uh, these conditions are required for unconditional variance of u t to be finite and positive also. Now, we consider Galk 1 1 model. So, sigma square t is equal to alpha naught plus alpha u t minus 1 square plus beta sigma square t minus 1. Both alpha and beta lie between 0 and 1 and alpha plus beta is less than 1. Now, this model actually provides a simple parametric function that can be used to describe the volatility evolution. Then, uh, if u t minus 1 square and sigma square t minus 1 are large, if this is large or this is large, then sigma square t will also be large. So, large u t minus 1 square to be followed by another large u t square. So, this is how this model takes care of volatile behavior of the process or volatility evolution of the process. A large u t minus 1 square or sigma square t minus 1 is followed by another large u t square. Then we assume that 1 minus 2 alpha square minus alpha plus beta square is greater than 0 and we require this condition to make the fourth movement positive or at least non negative. Then now we obtain m 4 upon m 2 square just to get the idea of kurtosis of the process. So, m 4 upon m 2 square is equal to 3 plus 6 alpha square upon 1 minus 2 alpha square minus alpha plus beta square and this is greater than 3. Then Gag 1 1 model is leptocurtic or have heavier tail than that of normal distribution. Now, for deriving the expression for Kurtosis, we have u t equal to epsilon t sigma t and epsilon t follows normal 0 1. Then m 2 is equal to expectation of u t square which is equal to expectation of sigma square t. And then expectation of sigma square t is equal to alpha naught plus uh, alpha naught upon 1 minus alpha plus beta. Then m 4 is equal to expectation of u t to the power 4 or this is equal to expectation of epsilon t to the power 4 into expectation of sigma t to the power 4. Then you know that uh, for standard normal distribution the fourth central moment is 3. So, you write 3 here and you have expectation of sigma t to the power 4. 
now now expectation of u t to the power 4 is equal to m 4. So, expectation of sigma t to the power 4 is equal to m 4 upon 3. So, we write expectation of sigma t to the power 4 equal to m 4 upon 3 and expectation of sigma t square is equal to m 2. So, ultimately you obtain m 4 equal to you got 3 times alpha naught square here. you have alpha naught square here, then here you are writing m 4 upon 3, then you multiply the equation by 3. So, you get m 4 equal to 3 alpha naught square plus 3 alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta, you get m 4 here plus 6 times alpha plus beta m 2. Because you have 2 times this. So, you get 6 times this. So, finally, you obtain m 4 equal to 3 alpha naught square plus 6 alpha naught alpha plus beta m 2 upon 1 minus 3 alpha square minus beta square minus 2 alpha beta. So, you obtain m 4 upon m 2 square equal to 3 times 1 minus alpha plus beta whole square plus 6 alpha plus beta 1 minus alpha plus beta upon 1 minus 3 alpha square minus beta square minus 2 alpha beta. And finally, you can write it as 3 plus 6 alpha square upon 1 minus 3 alpha square minus beta square minus 2 alpha beta. So, you get this expression for the kurtosis. So, Gauss process can be used to model leptokurtic error distributions that is fat tailed distributions because its kurtosis is greater than 3. Then we can write Gauss 1 1 process as sigma square t equal to alpha naught upon 1 minus beta plus alpha 1 minus beta l inverse u t minus 1 square. Because in Gauss 1 1 process, you have sigma square t equal to alpha naught plus alpha u t minus 1 square plus beta sigma square t minus 1. Then you take this term towards the left hand side. So, you get 1 minus beta l sigma square t or sigma square t is equal to alpha naught upon 1 minus beta plus alpha 1 minus beta l inverse u t minus 1 square. And then this is equal to alpha naught upon 1 minus beta plus alpha you get summation j equal to 0 to infinity beta to the power j u square t minus j minus 1. Now, since alpha beta is greater than 0, alpha plus beta is less than 1. The process transforms to R process of infinite order. And the weights are geometrically declining weights beta j's are the weights and these weights are geometrically declining. So, actually Gauss 1 1 process is equivalent to an arc process of infinite order with geometrically declining weights. Then as alpha tends to 0, then this term disappears. means the heteroscedasticity disappears and kurtosis tends to 3. 
you observe that this expression for the kurtosis tends to 3 when alpha is equal to 0. Now, we consider forecasting in Gauss model. The forecasting in Gauss model is just similar to that for ARMA model, because Gauss models are just parallel to ARMA models. So, we consider Gauss 1 1 model and with forecast origin H. Then the one step ahead forecast is sigma square h 1 is equal to sigma square h plus 1 is equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 u h square plus beta 1 sigma square h. So, with sigma square h 1 there is no problem you have information up to time h. because forecast origin is h. Now, for multi step ahead forecast we write u t equal to sigma t epsilon t in the GARC 1 1 model. So, your GARC 1 1 model for t plus 1 is alpha naught plus alpha 1 sigma square t plus beta 1 u t plus 1 square. So, if with the alpha 1 you have u t plus 1 square and with beta 1 you have sigma square t and then we write it equal to alpha naught plus then you write u t square equal to sigma square t epsilon t square. plus beta 1 sigma square t and then we write it as alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 sigma square t plus you have alpha 1 sigma square t epsilon t square minus 1. Now, for t equal to h plus 1, so you have sigma square h plus 2 equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 sigma square h plus 1 plus alpha 1 sigma square h plus 1 epsilon square h plus 1 minus 1. Then expected value of epsilon square h plus 1 minus 1 given f h is equal to 0. So, two step ahead forecast is means you have to take off sigma square h plus 2 given the information up to time h. So, you get sigma square h plus 2 equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 and then you have expectation of sigma square h plus 1 given f h is equal to sigma square h 1. So, you get sigma square h 1 here, then expectation of this term is 0. In general, L step ahead forecast is sigma square h l is equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 sigma square h l minus 1. So, this is how you can obtain different forecast recursively you get a recursive relationship between sigma square h l and sigma square h l minus 1. And then by back substitution you obtain sigma square h l equal to alpha naught 
1 minus alpha 1 plus beta 1 to the power L minus 1 upon 1 minus alpha 1 minus beta 1 plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 to the power L minus 1 sigma square h 1. You just substitute the sigma square h L minus 1 equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 sigma square h L minus 2 and so on. So, by the back substitution you obtain this expression. Ultimately, you will get a geometric series, to, then you add that geometric series and finally, you get this expression. Then in this expression, if you take L tending to infinity, then you obtain sigma is the limit of sigma square H L as L tending to infinity is alpha naught upon 1 minus alpha 1 minus beta 1, where 1 minus alpha 1 minus beta 1 is greater than 0, because this term goes to 0, alpha 1 plus beta 1 is less than 1, this term goes to 0. So, finally, you obtain alpha naught upon 1 minus alpha 1 minus beta 1. Now, this is actually equal to the unconditional variance of u t. Now, we have considered a numerical example to fit arc and garg processes. This is US whole sale price data index and we have quarterly data and then we have taken the first differenced log series and this is the graph of log series. You can find some volatility behavior. So, this graph shows periods of high volatility and other relatively less volatile periods. So, this makes the series a good candidate for arc modeling and we have fitted arc three process and this is the output. You get this log likelihood, then for the original series we get this constant term which has this standard error and then other values are also given here. Then for the arc process when we fitted the arc process for the variance, conditional variances then we get the first arc coefficient for like 1 is this second arc coefficient for lag is this and the third one is this. In fact, the coefficient of second lag is more than the coefficient for the first lag. So, this has more impact on the variance, slightly more impact and then this is the constant term. Then the standard is T values, these are also given. Then we have also fitted GARC model. GARC 1 1 process for this log difference series and then this is the output. Say so, log likelihood is 373.234 and then this is the out output for all these null series. This is the constant term and then in fitting GARC process the arc term of lag 1 is this, this is the coefficient of arc term corresponding is standard error etcetera and this is the coefficient of GARC term which is slightly more than the coefficient for arc term and then you have the constant term and ultimately your fitted arc 3 model is y t equal to 0 0.0064 plus epsilon t for the original time series and then for the conditional variances you have sigma square t equal to this. Similarly, for the Gaia Kormon model we have y t equal to 0 0.0061 plus epsilon t for the series y t and for the conditional variances we get this equation. So, in this lecture we have considered the order, order selection of arc processes and the parameter estimation of arc processes. We have also considered the GARC models which are 
generalization of arc model and uh, we observe that for arc and arc processes the errors have uh, usually fatter tails than the normal distribution. So, sometimes we also prefer to use a student t distribution for UTs as a student t distribution has fatter tails than the normal distribution. So, this was the last lecture of this course. Uh, as you saw, I have tried to cover most of the topics or most of the important topics related with the time series. Of course, uh, my approach was theoretical. I tried to give you the derivations of different results. At some places, I have also used uh, different real life examples for explaining the results. Uh, but uh, usually my approach was to give you enough theoretical background of all these topics. Of course, some of the applied workers may find it a bit hard to understand, but remember one thing, if you are applying time series, then you must have at least some theoretical background also. Some theoretical idea of the tools which you are using for your data set. Otherwise, it is highly probable that you are going to apply some wrong technique. So, even if you are an applied worker in your field, you are applying different time series tools you must know what you are doing with, with those tools. So, you must have some theoretical idea of those tools. So, now I am going to stop here, hope you must have enjoyed this course, thank you. Hello everybody, now uh, the discussion which I would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which I always feel and I am sure you will also reciprocate as I proceed and when you do the course is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis. So, what we mean by multivariate? So, we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data, you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem, MCMC techniques, then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data. Now, in the recent past, as we see that multivariate statistics has, has, has really increased in a, in, in a very exciting manner and if I trace back to history, it has been going on slowly for the last about 70, 80 years, but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know, but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example, canonical correlation technique, in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimensional uh, scaling techniques, structural equation modeling, be it in the area of finance, be it in the area of engineering, be it in the area of social sciences, be it in the area of economics. 
such that you are able to gather the, the information from the data in such a way that it really gives you some useful set of information. Now, in the recent um, past, there has been also an explosion of large and complex data sets, but added to that there has also been a, a commensurate increase in the computing and the statistical techniques. So, obviously, the question comes that if the statistical techniques are there for small, so called small data, not the big data, not the, the, the data which is of terabytes and and, and so on and so forth, where you use different type of computers to stay the data. The question obviously comes that are those statistical techniques really relevant when we use them in the big data sense. The question is they are not always relevant, they may not give you the best results. So, what we are seeing in years to come and, and I feel very excited about that is that how the new tools which we have already learned in statistics in multivariate statistical analysis are being redrawn, are being say for example, remodeled in such a way that they can be utilized along with the techniques of computing in a very nice manner that we are able to garner the information from big data very successfully and very nicely in such a way that they are able to portray a sense of information which we all long to have from big data, be it in say for example, medical sciences, be in the area of finance, be it in weather forecasting, be it in transportation, so on and so forth. So, obviously, it means that students, participants who are in a position with some brief mathematical background to take multivariate statistics and statistical tools as a subject in this program are assured are a very exciting future where they can use these tools to, to both gain the knowledge as well utilize them in a very best practical sense such that they are able to do some justice to the information which is given to them and get the best information from the data sets. I wish all the participants in this course the best of luck and I am sure they will also reciprocate the excitement which I have for this type of courses. Thank you.